Gun deaths surged during the pandemic, increasing nationwide by almost 35 percent. That's the highest level in 25 years, according to new data from the CDC. In California, lawmakers are making moves to address this issue by targeting gun makers. Joining me to talk about this effort is Assemblyman Phil Ting of San Francisco. Thank you so much for being with us here today. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here this morning. You know, so, you know, we are close approaching the one year mark of when the VTA San Jose mm -hmm. rail yard shooting happened. Um, just a few weeks ago, we had the mass shooting in Sacramento. So what goes through your mind when you hear about these incidents happening in our state? They're horrifying. They're absolutely horrifying. I remember hearing about there was a UPS shooting here in San Francisco. There was that awful shooting in San Bernardino. And every every morning when you hear these uh, shootings happen, you think, when is enough enough? And when are we going to have some common sense around gun violence? All right. So you've introduced the Firearms Accountability Act. That's AB 1594. You know, walk us through that and why you're going after gun makers. Well, this is a law that New York passed last year and has been test started to be tested through the court system. Uh, we really believe that this is constitutionally sound. What it says is that gun owners gun distributors, gun shops should have liability if for whatever reason they're not following state law. And what it allows is gun victims as well as large cities to go sue these manufacturers and distributors and shops uh, if for whatever reason they're being negligent. Mm -hmm. And are there certain standards that you're also holding a gun maker too like what does it mean for them to be negligent well just like any any company so if you're if you drive a car or you buy a toy if there's some sort of neg negligence you you as a consumer can go sue that company mm -hmm. the only company you can't sue is a gun manufacturer which is kind of shocking to think in this country where we have so many rights as consumers and we have rights to buy a product uh, that we can't hold this industry accountable and we can't hold them accountable for all the violence that they cause on our streets. Mm. So what is your response to critics who say, well, why go after, well, why not go after the individual firearm owners instead of going after the companies? This is just creating an even playing field. Uh, every company in this country has to be responsible for the products that they sell. And this is just putting gun manufacturers on the same playing field as every other company in America. Mm. And what is your... Well, let me backtrack here. You know, what is, where is the bill in the legislative process right now? The, the bill's in the very beginning. Uh, it starts in the assembly, which is uh, my house. And then if it goes through the assembly, it'll go to the Senate. And we need to get to the governor's desk by the end of August. And how confident do you, are you that uh, Governor Newsom is going to sign this and, and make it an official law? Well, I'm, I'm very hopeful. We, we were at a press conference in San Diego where he touted this bill as well as a number of other bills. He's been focused uh, on gun violence ever since he was mayor here in San Francisco, and I imagine he'll continue to be very supportive. Mm. And what is your message to victims of gun violence? Well, that you can now take matters into your own hands. I think so many victims, we had someone testify who was a victim at a child care center uh, back in, you know, back 20 years ago um, in Los Angeles. And she, she had this lawsuit that was going through the process that because the federal government passed a law, she wasn't able to pursue it. And so this is putting the power back in the victim's hands. Mm. And in our last bit of remaining time here, you, know, you also chair the Assembly Budget mm -hmm. Committee. Um, the state of California is uh, expecting a record surplus, $97 billion. Um, how would you like to see that funding used? Well, I think this is really an opportunity to plan for the long term. Uh, we really are beneficiaries of significant infrastructure investments, whether it's roads, whether it's higher education, uh, buildings. I think really this is really a good time to uh, pay for deferred maintenance, build buildings, build roads, really help our state infrastructure for the long run. Very good. Well, that's San Francisco Assemblyman Phil Ting. Thank you so much for being here and for your time. Thanks, Stephanie. Appreciate being here. We'll be right back.